what's up YouTubers? It's me again, Brian, aka Gamer55551. And I am back with a my two cent video for this week for the week of October 7th to the 13th, which ironically, as of recording of this video today, it is Friday the 13th, which we all know the messy you know, the whole the unluckiest day of the unluckiest day ever and so forth so forth but so far nothing un unlucky has happened to me just yet anyway getting on to the point though um after going off point right there um, i'm going to give you my thoughts on se uh, four stories this week that caught my attention uh for this week so why don't we get started with the first one and this one is the announcement of guacamelee if i'm saying the name correctly well the first and second one are going to be coming to the nintendo switch now, I remember playing the first one when it came out uh, a couple years ago when I tried it out on the Wii U. Um, and at that time, this was basically the um, the complete edition that had all the DLCs and all that I believe was released back on the PS3 and the PlayStation Vita back, on, back in the day. So. And for me, it was a surprisingly fun uh, Metroidvania style type of a game. It's definitely one I d did enjoy. I especially love the art style in that game. Well, it appears as though that Guacamelee 1 is coming not only to the Nintendo Switch, but supposedly what was thought to be a PlayStation exclusive, though, seems to be coming to the Switch as well, and that is the sequel, Guacamelee 2. In several articles, again, link will be in the description, you can check it out as well, um, below. Both of these are from uh, Nintendo Soup, though. Um, it says, Pop Agenda and Drinkbox Studios have teamed up to release Guacamelee Super Turbo Championship Edition on the Nintendo Switch. Um, it was released early, earlier this week. The game will be available via Nintendo eShop starting today, a couple of days ago. Um, it points out all the key features and all that stuff. On top of that, they announced um, following today's surprise release of Guacamelee, Drinkbot Studio and Pop Agenda has announced Guacamelee 2 will be making its way on, making its way to the Nintendo Switch in uh, December 2018. No further details are available at this time. Honestly, that they're bringing both of these games over is definitely a nice addition. Like I said before, I de definitely enjoyed the first one. It had that Metroidvania style feel to it. And to see both of these games come to the Nintendo Switch is a welcome addition indeed though whether or not the first one is another pickup again if you already play the game will ultimately depend on if you never played it before or if you know portability is your kind of thing but if you are a nintendo fan or a switch owner and you like metroidvania style games this is one you should definitely keep an eye out for so for now the first one is available right now while the sequel will we sequel which barring any delays or any issues emerge is coming out uh, December of this year. So overall, glad that both glad that both of these games have come to the Nintendo Switch. I enjoyed the first one when it came out, and I'm definitely looking forward to the sequel when that comes out um, in December of this year. Bar again, barring any delays or anything like that. <clears throat> Okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, we'll get to part two of our video. And this one has to do with the possibility that it sounds like Hyrule Warriors for the Nintendo Switch, dubbed Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition, may have actually sold very well on the Nintendo Switch. So we'll take a quick break, and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part two of our My True Scent video for this week. And for this one, we're going to be taking a look at some, a statement, I believe, from Koei Techno regarding Hyrule Warrior Switch. And it may have done well, at least according to what they said, though. Now, earlier this year, though, um, Koei Techno and Nintendo re-released -re Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition, which is basically the complete edition with all the DLCs and content from not only from the Wii U but also content that was made on the Nintendo 3DS but they brought it over to the Switch version as well and as for me as for me though 
I enjoyed the game though. I thought it was the best Warriors game that I played in a long, long time. Although I still stand behind my statement that Fire Emblem Warriors does edge out Hyrule Warriors uh, just a teeny, teeny bit though. And well, it seems as though that Hyrule Warriors, um, despite being a port of the 3DS and Wii U game, like other Wii U ports that have come to the um, Nintendo Switch, uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, um, Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze, and so forth, seems to be doing very well, at least according to what several articles are saying. Um, we'll start off with the first one, we'll start off with the first one, and that is from Nintendo Life. It says, quote, the Switch has allowed, um, allowed Nintendo to re-release Wii U games that many people missed out on the first time. So far, we've seen titles like Mario Kart 8, um, Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze, and Captain Toad's Treasure Tracker making a transition across the new hybrid console. Earlier next year, new Super Mario Bros. U will join this library of Deluxe Edition. One other game that had received the definitive treatment on Switch was Hyrule Warriors, originally released in 2014. Um, Kobe Techno game was given a second chance earlier this year as a definitive re-release. Much like the previous mentioned titles, the Switch version has seemingly performed better than expected in terms of sales. According to Nintendo Soup, the game sold more than the company predicted it would, especially in the West. Koei Techno also mentioned how its recent Japanese release of Warriors Orca 4, O-R-O-C-H-I, pardon me if I'm not saying that incorrectly, has been well, re well received. In saying to this, no exact sales figures were provided though. Um, it was basically basically come via a Koei Techno notice that was that's only in that's only in Japanese though, but a Twitter user by the name of Black Kite supposedly translated this and according to what the black Twitter user Black Kite or BK2128 is saying, he tweeted, quote, Koei Techno raised income forecast for second quarter of uh, fiscal year March 2019 for following reasons. Hyrule Warrior Switch sold much more than thought in the West. Warrior Orca 4 um, shipment is doing well. Null N I O H repeated sales still it's repeated sales still firm and got more royalties from um, I think Dynasty Warriors mobile games as well. So. But although no sales numbers are available at this time, it would have been nice if they actually show it. Pending this is true, pending if what they're saying is true, um, I'm glad Hyrule Warriors is doing uh, very well though. It obviously clear that we could, we'll probably see more support for Koei Techno on, on the Nintendo system down the road. Obviously they must be happy with a lot of their games seem to be doing very well on the Nintendo, on the Nintendo Switch to be exact. And the fact that Noel, the PS4 exclusive, is still doing well, I think that's great. I like that game as well. So, um, here's to hoping we see more collaboration between them and Nintendo. Maybe they, they could do, say, a Golden Sun Warriors game. Maybe they could do maybe a Xenoblade Chronicles Warriors game. I would like to see that one happening. Taking the characters from Xenoblade Chronicles, Xenoblade Chronicles X, and Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Um, a Donkey Kong Country Warriors game that may sound left field, but would like to see that happen. And the one that a lot of fans would like to see happen, of course, is the Mario Warriors games, which would be kind of interesting if they do that, though. Um, I would say, why not add the fan favorite that's been sort of been around the internet that's been going around the internet lately, the Bowserette and Princess Boo in there? I mean. I mean, hell, if you can make up um, characters like uh, Linkle, Lana, and Sid, CIA, um, from, to be in a whole new cast of characters in Hyrule Warriors, I can't see how you couldn't use, say, Bowserette or Princess Boo and put them into, say, like a Mario Warrior game, to be exact. And maybe, hopefully, this will convince Koei Techno to consider if they can pull it, pull it off, perhaps bringing me ranging from a dead or alive game to maybe digging through some of their old libraries, like maybe remaking uh, Windback or Crimson C2 or Rygar to even perhaps maybe bringing the Ninja Gaiden games over as well or doing like a Ninja Gaiden 4 to be exact. So 
I'm so overall, I'm glad Hyrule Warriors is doing well, at least according to what Koei Techno is saying, though. Um, here's and like I said, here's a hoping we get more support for them down the road as well. So, so overall, good that Hyrule Warriors is getting the second chance, though. And chances are this might this probably won't be the last we'll see of Wii U games making the transition over to the Nintendo Switch, at least for now, though. <clears throat> Okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, we're going to get to part three. And this one's going to be about the official announcement of Project xCloud and Project Steam, which is basically, or stream if I'm saying the name correctly, um, the new streaming service that's going to be that both Microsoft and its competitor, Google, are working on. So we'll take a quick break, and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part three of our My Two Cent video. And for this one, we're going to be taking a look at the announcement that both Google and Microsoft have made, has made so far. And that is according, that is they're basically announcing their own streaming service involving, you know, playing video games through like a PC or your Android or your smartphone. In other words, it sounds very similar to what nvidia did does with their geforce and in other words it's kind of like netflix for gaming as well so in several articles we'll start off with the first one this one comes from microsoft's official blog and it basically says quote it's about their project x cloud gaming with you at the center um, the future of gaming is a world where where you are empo empowered to play games you want with the people you want whenever you want wherever you are and on any device you choose our vision for the evolution of gaming is similar to music and movies entertainment should be available on demand and and accessible to any screen today i'm excited to share with you one of our key projects that will take us an accelerated journey to that future world project x cloud um it says today the games you play are very much dictated by the device you're using Project X Cloud's state-of-the-art global gaming streaming technology will offer you the freedom to play on the device you want without being locked to a particular device, empowering you, the gamer, to be at the center of your um, gaming experience. Though it says, scale about Project X Cloud, scaling and building our Project X Cloud is a multi-year journey for us. We begin public trials in 2019 so we can learn and and scale with different volumes and location. Our focus is on devices, and and uh, is oh, excuse me. Our focus is on delivering an amazing ad experience to existing Xbox players, and on empowering developers to scale to hundreds of millions of new players across devices. Our goal with Project X Cloud is to deliver a quality experience for all gamers on all devices that cons consistently with the speed and high fidelity gaming experience and expected on their PC and consoles. We, we enable comp compatibility with existing and future Xbox games by building our custom hardware from our data center that leverage our years of console and platform experience. We've architected a new customizable bl <coughs> excuse me, blade that can host the component parts of multiple Xbox One consoles as well as associated infrastructure supporting it. We will scale these custom blades in data centers across Azura regions over time. Um, they're also talking about how they are testing it out. We are testing Project X Cloud out today. The test runs on devices, mobile phones, and tablets pair with an Xbox wireless controller through Bluetooth, and it's also playable using touch input. The, em the immersive nature of console and PC games often require controllers that are mapped to multiple keys, buttons, sticks, and triggers. We are developing a new game-specific touch input overlay that provides maximum response in a, min in a minimal footprint for players who choose to play without a um, controller. No. Meanwhile, Google um, is basically launching their own thing called Project Stream. Um, it, and this is from the Mon Monthly Fool. And it says, Google recently revealed Project Stream, a cloud gaming platform for streaming high-end video games 
in the Chrome browser. Google began testing the platform on October 5th by letting a limited number of participants play Ubisoft's Assassin's Creed Odyssey for free in Chrome. Google states that the selection participated will need home internet connection of at least 25 megabytes per second as well as a Google and Ubisoft account. Google posted a demo video on YouTube showing the platform streaming Assassin's Creed Odyssey at 60 frames um, per second or FPS at a 1080p resolution which is comparable to the performing of a high-end gaming PC. Google's move into the cloud market isn't surprising. Reports about the project, previously called Project Yeti, has already surfaced over the past year. It's also arriving late to the party since Sony already launched the world's largest cloud and gaming platform with PlayStation Now, and NVIDIA launched two versions of its GeForce Now cloud gaming platform for its Shield device and PC. HP also offers a cloud gaming service for its own Omeg Gaming PC owners, while Microsoft recently started testing um, Project X Cloud, a game streaming service for Xbox consoles, Windows PC, and mobile devices, which it plans to launch uh, next year. Electronic Arts is also reporting developing its own cloud gaming platform. However, what sets Project, Project Steam or Project Stream apart? from those services that it doesn't require the installment of any additional front-end software. Instead, Google, Google can merely use Chrome, the most widely used internet browser in the world, as a launchpad for its cloud gaming platform. So it appears as though a lot of companies are really jumping on this whole streaming and cloud service approach to when it comes to gaming, though. So, excuse me. And... I'm kind of mixed on this one as well, though. Um, while I don't, while I won't deny that digital distribution and streaming could one day be the future, I'm just not sure about this. I just, I feel more comfortable when it comes to actually buying and purchasing a physical game over a streaming because with the streaming, while it does have its ups, it also has its downs in which that. If the servers are down, you don't have control over a game that if you want to play or something like that, where buying a physical copy, you have the time when you want to play it and all that stuff, provided it's not an always online type of a game, aim and so forth. So, I mean, it's an interesting idea and will be really interesting to see how well it does though. And I think one thing that will be really interesting to see is what impact this will have on Nintendo though. Will it have a major impact or will it not have a major impact? Right now, I would have to say it's too early to tell for Project Cla X Cloud or Project Stream is gonna have any impact on Nintendo. Um, if it does, and if it does take off and it does become like the new norm and all, then I could see Nintendo doing something similar to what the other competitors might be doing. Again, too early to tell on that one. We'll have to wait and see. Um, and, but as far as the idea of playing these games off of devices and your computer, though, it's an interesting idea, though, but I'm kind of mixed on it. The whole idea of making from a subscription service, how much will it cost to be exact, to, of course, latency and having a solid connection and so forth and what happens if it's down your system the their network is down or your network is down in fact you won't be able to play the game or even how about like you know saving a game and so forth so i i'm kind of mixed on on this one though i'm curious to see how it will work though um and i've yet to try it out so we'll have to wait and see though so overall it's an interesting idea it's possible that we could see streaming as the future of gaming though. I mean, that's a possibility, but we'll have to wait and see if it truly takes off and not. And not. So it's an interesting idea, but I do have some concerns about it to be exact. Okay, uh, we're gonna take a quick break and when we get back, we'll get to part four of our video. And this one's going to be Ubisoft talking about how, they're, how they are pleased with the sales of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. So we'll take a quick break and we will be right back.
Okay, and we are back with our fourth and final My Two Cent video for this week. And for this one, we're going to be taking a look at a report coming out about how Assassin's Creed Odyssey pretty did well for Ubisoft, though. Now, um, this month, though, Assassin's Creed Odyssey came out for both the PS4 and the Xbox One. And I believe PC as well, though. Again, I'm not a PC gamer, though, but I assume they brought it out as well. And I've been playing it for the last couple for the last couple of weeks, a um, couple of days or so to be exact. Though um, I haven't gotten to a review yet, I'm hope to get to that one soon, hopefully though. But I will say that this certainly is. I haven't had a fun with an Assassin's Creed game since Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag to be exact. So it's great to see the it's great to see that this series is sort of it's making the comeback and got following the debacle of the mess that Assassin's Creed Unity was though even though I'm a little iffy of them releasing Origins last year and then releasing Odyssey this year to be exact. Well it appears as though um, Ubisoft is certainly happy with the way things are going with Assassin's Creed Odyssey at least according to what they're saying. Um, from an article from um, from article from um, comicbook.com comicbook.com it points out quote last week Assassin's Creed fans were cap captive or were excited by the release of Odyssey the biggest game in the series to date and thanks to Ubisoft we just know how well the game has fared in terms of initial sales the company has announced that Odyssey Curry holds the sales record for the current generation of the franchise outperforming last year's impressive numbers of Assassin's Creed Origins the company has noted the game has attacked, attended a strong word of mouth since its release, as well as a number of high reviews. Though, exact sales weren't given, but the company did note that the game performed very well, outperforming the likes of Origin, Syndicate, and Unity in terms in terms of launch sales. Initially enough, however, it it didn't notice whether it beat the sales numbers of the games in the previous generation, including. Um, Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, which has long been favored with the fans. Um, one of the vice presidents of sales marketing from Ubisoft notes that we are incredibly proud of what the team accomplished with Assassin's Creed Odyssey and humble that humbled by the amazing reception from critics and players. Based on the quality of the game and the very encouragement reaction from players, we expect Odyssey to be one of the top performing Assassin's Creed games of all time. That's a heavy prediction. Uh, for the game, considering millions of copies that Origin sold last year, as well as 10 million units that Black Flag shipped upon its initial release in the first two months. And considering that o Odyssey was built with lasting value in mind, uh, it's sure to remain a top 10 favorite for some time. Ubisoft announced its da downloadable content plan before its release, which I can understand some people may not be happy with that because that gives the impression of them, why did you put this in the game in the first place? which not only includes two new chapters to the main story, but also additional downloadable content, including a remastered version of both Assassin's Creed 3 um, and its side spin-off Liberations, which are expected to release over the next um, few months. So, and this is all despite the fact of a report of a 25% drop in uh, physical sales. Now, assuming this is all accurate and so forth though, I will say, if, if this is true, and this isn't spin by Ubisoft, which, though I wouldn't rule that out in any way, I would say good, because I felt that last year's Assassin's Creed Origin was sort of the boost that that series named, at, the series needed though. After what happened with Assassin's Creed Unity and the damage that did to the series, and Ubisoft in general though, um, this, needed, this series needed a shot in the arm though and I think um, Origins was definitely that shot in the arms and I'm glad that following up with that with Odyssey is definitely a good thing though um, it is definitely and I will say Odyssey is a fun game even though the criticism about the microtransaction in the game still exists and that's not that criticism is not going away and I can understand people's concern about it though to be fair <clears throat> excuse me to be fair Based on my time with the game so far, I might be a little bit early in the game though, but based on my time with it so far, I haven't run into a situation where I've been, um, excuse me, 
forced to use the microtransactions or anything like that. So, it, yes, it's there, and it's unfortunate that it has to be there even for a single-player game, despite other single-player games like God of War and Spider-Man or Mario Odyssey or Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild didn't have microtransactions and that sold well. Oh, and The Witcher 3 too, though. Um, that being said, I haven't felt like it turned into sort of like a, a pay to win or trying to force me to use it or anything like that. Okay, so on one hand, it, they didn't get, they aren't getting greedy like EA has with Star Wars Battlefront. But on the other hand, though, the fact that it's there, I can understand being a turn off for some people, though. Having said that, though, um, if this, if what Ubisoft is saying is true, um, this is good. It probably means that we're going to probably see another entry in the Assassin's Creed series, though. If that's the case, I'm hoping that they at least don't release one next year. I hope they at least let the developers take some time for them to release the next entry in the series, though. But overall, I'm glad. I'm glad if this is true, it's doing very well. Um, Origins was a shot in the arm the series need, and Odyssey is continuing what Origin started though, so I think that's really great. Um, hopefully, hopefully we'll see where it stands when when we see the NPD charts. Um, possibly November's NPD charts, so we'll have to wait and see. But overall, uh, good for Assassin's Creed Odyssey. <clears throat> Okay, uh, this concludes this video. This concludes this my two cent video for this week. And again, these are my opinions, but what are yours? What are your thoughts about Grocco Melee, if I'm saying the name correctly, one and two um, coming to the Nintendo Switch? The first one being available now and the second one being out in December of 2018. Um, are you excited for these games? Um, did you enjoy it on? The, did you enjoy the first one on the Wii U or the PS4 and Xbox One that's worth picking up again for the Nintendo Switch? Or do you think it's not worth the double dip? What are your thoughts about Hyrule Warriors possibly selling well on the Nintendo Switch? Are you surprised by this? Are you not surprised by this? Do you think that this will encourage uh, Koei Tecno, Tecno even more to support the Switch even more than it is right now? Or do you think this just reinforces that whole support for the Nintendo Switch. Um, <clears throat> what are your thoughts about Project X Cloud and Project Stream from both Microsoft and Google though? Do you think this is the future of gaming right here? Streaming through um, devices and computers and everything like that? Um, do you still feel that consoles will still be around and all? Do you like the idea of cloud streaming or are you completely against the idea? And what are your thoughts about Ubisoft's comments on Assassin's Creed Odyssey uh, selling very, very well? Do you think the game deserves the praise that it gets, though? Do you think it is selling well, or do you think it's nothing more than PR spin by Ubisoft? Um, do you agree with what I said in this video? Do you disagree? Do you have a difference of opinion? As always, sound off on the comment section below. Let me know what you think. And I hope you hit that like button, I would appreciate it. And I hope you do subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you do, make sure you hit that bell icon for notifications for any new video I put up. Also, feel free to share this video if you want to. And feel free to donate to my channel if you like. You could do it through uh, PayPal me or Patreon. Links will be in the description of this video. And I will see you again next time when I do another video. Hopefully that will be soon. Until then, from Southern California, I wish you all a good day then. Bye!